everyone, my name is Maite and this is my channel. So this video is going to be about what you should pack to take on a volunteer work trip. Of course everything you take will depend on the place you're going, so make sure you do some research about the weather, about what the habits of the people there are, because you want to be appropriate for the culture and you want to be appropriate for the weather. So first of all, I'm going to be talking about the things that you should do before you leave your country. Before you even start planning your trip, you have to think about all of these paperwork things because they're quite important for the trip itself. First of all, make sure you have your passport because you're going to need that no matter where you're going if you leave your country. Also, make sure to check if the country you're visiting requires a visa. The country that I went to, for instance, the Ivory Coast, it required one and it was a process that took about 30 days. So make sure you check that with some time in advance before leaving for your trip. Also, make sure to check the embassy's website of the country you're going to because there they put some tips on all the paperwork you need to get into the country. But the second thing that you're going to need is some money. If you're going with an agency or a group, make sure to check how much money they recommend for you to take because that depends, that varies on whether you have meals included in your plan already or if you're going to need to eat out. Make sure that you check that before you leave because in any case of emergency, you are going to need the money with you. Also, make sure to check how you're going to exchange your currency because in some countries they tend to overcharge visitors, so make sure you have a local that could exchange that money for you or if the agency is going to do that for you, which is very, very important. Also, when you're there using your money, make sure that a local does it for you as well because they tend to overcharge in supermarkets or in different places depending on where you're going. You might be charged twice or three times the price of something because you're a foreigner. You're also going to have to check if the country you're going to visit requires volunteer work paperwork, something proving that you are entering that country to do volunteer work. So make sure to check if you need that too. Well, this part is really, really important. Some countries require that you have certain vaccines to enter the country. The Ivory Coast, for instance, requires that you have the Yellow Fever International Certificate of Vaccination. So I had to bring this little paper with me along with my passport so that when I got to the country I had to show that I was vaccinated against the Yellow Fever, otherwise I could not enter the country. So make sure once more to check the embassy's website of the country you're visiting to make sure what vaccines they demand. Make sure to check what vaccinations are recommended for the country because sometimes they have a list of diseases that are not mandatory for you to have a vaccination against or prophylaxy against but it's recommended for you to prepare yourself. For me, for instance, since I was visiting a tropical country, there was a great risk of malaria. So we did a prophylaxy for malaria. So make sure to check all of those things, do a great and deep online research on the country you're visiting and what vaccines and prophylaxies are recommended. If you feel the need, visit a doctor specialized. I went to an infectologist and she was really, really helpful. She told me what vaccines to take, she told me what I eat, what I couldn't eat, she helped me with the malaria prophylaxy. So it is really important if you feel the need or if the country that you're going to visit has a danger of many different diseases, make sure to check that before you leave. And make sure you have the vaccines a certain amount of time before you leave because some vaccines have a period of working, you know, they, they need a period to start working, so make sure you check that as well. Also, I would recommend that you ask your agency or group what kind of things you're going to need. For instance, if you're going to have access to the internet or if you're going to have to end up buying a SIM card, if you're going to have access to washing machines or places to wash your clothes during your trip, because that will vary the amount of clothing that you have to take with you. Also, make sure to check what size of luggage you can take with you, because you don't want to arrive in the airport with an L size bag and you can only have a medium. So make sure you check all of that before you leave. Now we're going to talk about what you should put in your bag. So I'm going to start talking about clothing and then moving on to the other things. So first of all, make sure that you check the climate of the country you're going to visit because that will change everything you pack. The Ivory Coast, for instance, is a tropical country with lots of forests and it's very humid and they only have rainy months and sunny months. They don't have the difference between winter and summer, so the temperature is pretty much the same all year round. So make sure you check that what the temperature is going to be like when you were there. 
before you leave, make sure to check what is appropriate in the country you're going to visit because women in some places cannot wear certain types of clothing. So make sure you check that before you leave. Ask your agent, ask your group if that is okay and if you can wear shorts or if you have to wear longer things, if you can wear only skirts, make sure you check all of that before you pack. Before I move on to the specific things you have to take list, I would also like to point out that if you can, pack things that you're not really so passionate about because you are going to leave those things behind. Me, for instance, I packed my bag thinking that I would leave those things behind to the people who need them. So I packed things that were okay and they were good, in good state, that I could wear them and that I could also give them away in good state, but that I was not sad to be leaving behind. So make sure you do that because people where you're visiting depending on where you're visiting, they're going to have material needs as well. So make sure you pack an extra pair of shoes, make sure you pack kids clothing if you can, if you have any anyone who has a child that's growing up, get their clothing and pack that with you because it's really, really, really important that you leave some things behind because those people, they need it. It was actually the doctor that I visited that told me that, that mosquitoes run away from light colors. So if you can wear white, if you can wear light beige, if you can wear light pink, make sure that you stick to those colors because they're going to run away from you which is really great in places where they have lots of mosquitoes okay now moving on to the specifics it is really important that you pack for the amount of days they're going to stay there so that's why I said check with your agency if you're going to have access to washing your clothes because that will vary the amount of clothing you need to take me for instance I stayed for 15 days and I'm going to be telling you everything that I took but as I said I left most things behind so I'm just going to link similar ones or put pictures of similar ones so they have something to base yourself on. Make sure you take one pair of jeans because you might need to dress up and those are practical. Make sure you take one pair of leggings, preferably light color, but make sure they're not transparent and they make you comfortable. The third pair of pants that I took were tracking pants, those waterproof ones that you could go anywhere with. I barely used them to be honest because everybody was dressed a little better, everybody was always with jeans or jean shorts, but those are important depending on where you're going. As for shorts, I took two pairs of those, one longer one that was more like safari shorts and a shorter one that wasn't really really short, that was long short for shorts, but that could match anything, so it was there if I needed it. So make sure you take comfortable t-shirts with you. I bought some sporty material, light t-shirts that are comfortable and that they really match everything because you don't, you can't really think about that. You just have to put them together when you're leaving. So make sure you take the practical t-shirts. Take about five or six, that will depend on whether you can wash your clothes or not. So once again, make sure you check that. Since the Ivory Coast was in the rainy season and I knew that it got chilly at night but it was really warm during the day, I packed two different types of coats. I packed a waterproof, very, very light material one that really was only to keep me safe from the rain and keep me safe from the insects at night because it covers you up. I also took one a little warmer because I'm someone who gets cold very, very easily, so it was just for safety. Well, in my case, I wasn't going to do any tracking or safari, so I didn't need to take specific shoes. I only took two pairs of sneakers and one pair of flip-flops, and I left them all there, and I actually came back with the flip-flops and left the two sneakers there. So make sure you check what you're going to need, what type of shoes you're going to need. For girls out there, take sports bra because they're comfortable, they go under everything, and they're really practical. Also, make sure to check with your agency if you're going to need some fancier clothes. In my trip, for instance, we went to three different masses, so we needed long dresses that were appropriate to go to the mass and that didn't really look like we were going out for a hike. So make sure if you're going to need one of those pieces as well. Please take a hat. I'm someone who really, really doesn't like to wear caps or hats, but I took a cap because you're going to have to stay clear from the sun depending on where you're going. So make sure you pack that as well. For the ladies out there, please pack a lot of hair ties because you are going to need it. Also, don't forget the basics like pajamas, underwears, and the other things that you might need on a daily basis. Put some plastic bags inside your luggage because if you need to put dirty clothing in there or if you need to put something wet inside your luggage, you won't ruin the rest of the thing. So make sure you pack three or four plastic bags or other different kinds of bags and like waterproof bags that you can put inside your luggage and separate what's clean from what's dirty. Make sure to check with your agency or group if you will be provided with towels and um, pillowcases, make sure to check that. I packed one face towel, one body towel and one pillowcase just for safety. 
Don't forget a pair of flip flops because depending on where you're going to shower it, you're going to need to put those for hygiene. And also it's practical when you're running around and you don't want to put sneakers, just put your flip flops, they're practical. Also, make sure to check with your agency or group if you're going to need working material like gloves and masks and all of that. If you're going to paint something, you're going to work in the garden, make sure you have those things with you because normally they don't provide you. So make sure you ask that as well. And the last thing in this section is really important that you take with you a comfortable and light backpack that you can walk around with. I never left without my backpack because I wanted to have my phone with you so that I could take pictures. I wanted to have some food with me and I wanted to have some bottle of water and some sunblock if I needed to put it again, some repellent that if I needed to put it again, I'm going to be talking about that right now, so please wait. And um, those things that you have to carry around, some hair ties and all of that. So make sure you put a light backpack in your bag or take it with you during the flight with the basic things you're going to need. Okay, now moving on to the other section of things that you should put in your luggage. Make sure you pack a mosquito repellent. In my case, I'm a little exaggerated, I took three. I actually ended up using two bottles and leaving one bottle for the people behind that stay for a little longer. So make sure you take those and make sure you leave those with you on your backpack at all times because normally they last about eight to 10 hours, maybe a little less. And when it becomes like five or 6 p.m., depending on where you're going, of course, it is the time when the mosquitoes come out to attack. So it's really good that you just reapply it. It's really important to have it with you. And do not forget the sunblock. For those women out there who like to put um, face sunblock and body sunblock like I do, take both of them. You are going to need it. Every day before I left, I would apply sunblock on all my body and on my face and then I would come up and after it dried a little, I would come with a repellent on my body so that I would be safe. Please don't forget your basic hygiene product like toothbrush and toothpaste and soap and shampoo and conditioner you are going to need those things because you're probably not going to be provided with them so make sure you check if you're going to need those things again make sure you make a list of the things you use on your daily basis that you're going to need like that you know things like that now this is a little tip that i would have liked to listen before take some comfort food because depending on where you're going it's not everything that you're going to be able to eat depending on what your doctor recommended and also it's not everything that is safe it's not everything that you like so take some comfort food take some chocolate with you take some crackers with you some things that you like and when you're not standing to eat different food anymore you can just have it with you it's great to experiment you should definitely experiment and eat different things but always have something safe with you for when you get hungry or for a snack or anything like that so take some comfort food and another tip that I have to give you is take bottled water with you it is really really important that you only drink water that you were 100% sure that is safe of course, you can't go through airport security with bottled water, but after you're inside the airport, make sure you buy lots of bottled water because you don't know when you're going to have access to those. So the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about is take gifts for the people there. Get something from your town that you have only had there or candy that you love. Do that cultural exchange that is so important. And don't forget about the children. Children love candy, they love sweets, take some of that, but also think about what is important. Take some clothing, get a friend that has a child that's growing up and get the clothing, take the clothing for the children, for the adults as well, it is really important that you pack extra and leave as many things behind as you can. Also for the children, take some drawing books, some painting books, some pencils, some coloring, anything. Children will love it and it's really, really important. And above all, pack some adventurous spirit and enjoy your experience. It might be something that is once in a lifetime, so enjoy it as much as you can. And if you'd like to hear about my experience, let me know that I will make sure to make a long video talking about it. And if you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification post for more videos of the sort. Thank you for watching.